Hello! So last week I showed off in my Let's Play series my new witch farms that I have designed. And uh, in testing them, especially how, how they would behave compared to my old witch farms, I found something kind of weird and that they were probably in shorter tests. Look, I'm, I'm very much hedging my bets here that they were performing slightly better than the reference witch farm design from Il Mango that everybody is using. Well, everybody is using raid farms right now, but I don't want to get my redstone from raid farms. I'm, I'm going to be the holdout. I'm going to be the blacksmith in the age of the car. I want my redstone to come from witch farms. So, well, I kind of got inspired by the Il Mango's design. This is pretty much exactly the same design with some details that are slightly different and one improvement, but we're going to get into that improvement later. I want to test if this is actually performing better because it was performing slightly better, a hair better than El Mango's design in a very, very short tests. And I don't know if it's just noise or uh, if this is actually a real effect. And uh, to perform these tests, we are here. This is actually the world download for Il Mango's witch farm. Um, and th there was another witch farm next to it, so the, the, the structure here. And uh, so I placed mine perfectly located over that one. Uh, this one is his. Let's go turn both of them on. And now it should be on. Yeah, it is on. And now I need to turn mine on using slightly different clock. That is probably a smarter clock, by the way. But I might, I have an, if this is performing worse, I still have an idea for, for that I can at least improve the clock. So now this one is running. I have measured that this AFK spot here is exactly, well, if we go here and stand in this AFK spot and I set my mini HUD reference points and I fly exactly to this corner of the full damage chute we can see we are 114 away. And if we are here, we are closer than 128 everywhere in the farm. So nothing should despawn. And the same thing goes for that one. So yeah, everything is fine here. Everything is fine here. Everything is fine there. Nothing should despawn. No. So let's go stand on the AFK spot right here. Are things spawning? Yeah. Uh, are things spawning in there? Well, yeah, things are spawning there. Things are spawning there. Let's reset the counter. And let's do a tick warp for not an hour, not 10 hours, 100 hours. Bam. Let's go. Things are happening there. Things are happening there. See you in 100 hours. And well, that took forever, and I was about to record a little bit uh, saying something like that. You know when a scientific paper has a title that ends with a question mark? Then, uh, well, that usually means that the answer is no. And this video is supposed to have a title that ends in a question mark. And the answer is no, my farm is worse. But just out of curiosity, I started poking around here and I noticed something. The entire 100 hour test, and yes, I have done the entire 100 hour test. No, I'm not going to show you the results because the results are a lie. And you cannot spot the problem. You cannot spot the error. Um, I, I, I have no idea how this could have happened. But if we look at which block I'm lo looking at here, right, this is the floor on which the first uh, group of uh, witches should spawn. And I'll show you with mini HUD that uh, we can see the bounding boxes if we go in here. The structure bounding box ends right here. So uh, the floor here is also spawnable. This is spawnable, this is spawnable, and the bounding box ends just above the floor here. So the witch farm is placed perfectly correctly. But uh, what Y level are we at here? 64. And if we go to Il Mango's farm that is placed here, what Y level do we get here? 62. That other witch farm structure is two blocks higher up, which means that even though we are in 118, it still matters. It still affects rates. And yes, all the testing is done in 118 with the much, much, much worse rates. And the results were that mine was like a 1% slower or, or something like that. But 
if we account for, and I did the math, and if we account for the, the difference in Y level for where the witches are spawning, uh, it might actually turn out that mine is 1% plus or minus 1% better. But I'm not going to give you the numbers because the numbers are a lie. We need to test this properly. I was being lazy and I just used his world download because I knew it had a second witch hut. Well, uh, we can't do that. Let's build our own world with swamp huts that we can test things in because clearly this doesn't work here. And here we are, my own witch farm testing world. The, this is my design here. This is Ilmango's design. I'm pretty sure I copied everything correctly. Things are actually spawning here, even though the clock is not on. Yeah, that I, I guess that should be, happen. Uh, what I did, I just picked the one of the first uh, quad witch hut seeds that I could find that was just completely swamp. Because there can be issues when there are non-swamp blocks relatively near a swamp hut. So uh, this is all swamp, a quad witch hut. And there is actually a possible AFK spot right here, or probably slightly lower, that would reach all the four huts. Uh, but for this test, I just made a new AFK spot that is exactly in the middle between these two. So, let's do this again. And the 100 hour test, is, it took forever. Even though they are relatively performant, yeah, the clock is on, it still takes a long, long, long time for the test to run. Counter resets, tick, warp, not one hour, not 10 hours, 100 hours. Bam, let's do this. All right, I said that I would do 100 hours, but I am impatient. I think we are over 40 hours, though. Yes, we are over 40 hours, so uh, let's see the results here. Dun, 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 dun. The suspense is immense. Yay! My farm is faster, my farm is faster, my farm is faster. It's not by much. It, this is so little, but it is something. Let's just do some math here. 2287 to 71.4. We are 0.7% faster. Yay! <laughs> It, it, it is pretty much nothing. I also don't want to run the, the test uh, longer than this. Wait, wait a minute. This this is silly. Let's stop the tick warp. Uh, and let's... Ah, oh, it's brighter. I can see you now. Well, no, you can see me. I don't want to run it longer because I have an idea for how to improve my farm a little bit. Potentially. And we also need to do some testing to try to answer the question why it is like this why this is an improvement. Let's do some tests. And what I want to specifically test is uh, how spawning actually works, at least how spawning affects witch farms. Because I used to have the wrong understanding of how pack spawning works. I used to believe that uh, pack spawning would work like, let's say the game picks this block here and uh, tries to spawn something. And if that succeeds or fails, it continues then uh, to some block with a, an offset up to six blocks in either horizontal direction, not up and down, just horizontal direction, and does another one. But I was thinking that since witches can only spawn one witch per pack, then uh, pack spawning wouldn't matter at all, because let's say if the game started trying to spawn something right here, uh, it would just fail and that was it. Uh, that's not how pack spawning works at all. My, my, I, I misunderstood completely. The way pack spawning actually works is that the game always does uh, one to four attempts to sp spawn things, and uh, it doesn't really give up until it has spawned the, the full amount of a pack. So for witches, that would be one, but it will do four attempts to spawn things until it succeeds at least once. For witches, that is. And another interesting thing I learned about pack spawning is that the movements of the six blocks in either direction, so let's say we start spawning here, and then there is a movement horizontally up to six blocks away from the initial block, uh, that change in coordinates actually is done first. It's done but before any attempt to spawn. So even if the game starts spawning in this block, the first thing it does is to move away from it. Which means that it is a good idea for us to have blocks here, at least up to six blocks, but we're gonna test if it works further, right? Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So the attempt can start right here, but then move six blocks and end up in the farm. So it is always a good idea to have uh, your possible spawning spaces at least six blocks away from your actual spawning platform because the game will always do the movement horizontally before it does any spawning attempt. And we, we will of course test this. This is my testing setup. The testing setup is very simple. Uh, that's one of the witch huts. Like I said, this is a quad witch hut. So we can barely see that one. I lowered my render distance so we wouldn't be loading other parts of the world. And uh, this is one of the witch huts. I only have a spawning platform on the top there. And right now nothing is spawning because it's daylight. But we can first disable the daylight cycle so that uh, we don't get any day. And uh, let's set the time to midnight. Bam. And now this should be dark. Uh, it, it actually isn't, but we're going to get to that in a minute. It doesn't matter for the test, but uh, it, it will matter later. Uh, and I also have command blocks here that are uh, killing all witches like this and destroying all items because I don't want the drops to build up there. And for measuring how this thing behaves, we're going to be using spawn tracking. Let, let's stop it in case it was started earlier and start. This is a feature of the carpet mod, which tells us how many things spawn. And you will notice that very few things are spawning and it has to do with light levels. But, but we'll get into that later. It doesn't matter for now. And I'm going to tick warp for 10 hours because I know that the results here are very, very noisy and it's kind of hard to get the exact results that uh, I want to see. So uh, let's do 10 hours and see what results we get. All right, the 10 hour tick warp has passed. So let's do spawn tracking and... Uh, we're getting 57 witches per hour. It's a quite low number, but uh, it's kind of expected because pack spawning matters a lot. So now let's extend this platform so that it is uh, six blocks out in all directions, but non-spawnable blocks. And I'm just filling it with white stained glass because as long as it's non-spawnable, any block will do. Because what we are actually caring about is the height map. So the way the spawning algorithm picks which block to try to spawn on is to first it picks an X and Z coordinate, so horizontal coordinates, and then it looks at the highest block in that column, the column from the bottom of the world to the highest block that is not air, and then picks one random spot between the bottom of the world and the highest block plus one. Plus one is because, of course, we want the spawning attempts to be here, because if it didn't, wasn't plus one, all the spawning attempts would be with the feet of the mob inside this block, and that would be silly. So it does plus one. And this is why it's a common knowledge to have your mob farms as low as possible in the world, because that increases the chances of your block that you actually want to be picked in the spawning attempt. For witch farms, this cannot be done. That's why witch farms were so heavily nerfed in 118, because the height of the world increased and the amount of spawning attempts hasn't increased. So since the witch farms are theoretically twice as high up in the sky, uh, they get basically half the rates. And uh, that's what I've also seen experimentally. The drop rates of witch farms have been cut in half. But we have this platform now because uh, we want the game to be picking one of these blocks and then jumping into the platform. So let's run for 10 hours and see how this affects spawn rates. And uh, here we are 10 hours later and let's do spawn tracking and we're getting 108 witches per hour. Uh, that's a significant, significant improvement. And that is because, well, we have much more spawning spaces, right? This is not a huge platform. So by adding this glass, we definitely more than doubled. That is much, much, much more than doubled the amounts of spaces where the spawning can start and do the jump later. So now we're going to expand to 12 blocks outside and see how that affects things. And 10 hours later, let's see the results. 98 per hour. Yeah, 
I don't understand it either. This is uh, something that I have done multiple times and tested it multiple times. And uh, for 12, I'm getting worse results than for 6. I, I can't explain it. I, I have no idea how to explain it. I don't understand why it would make it worse, but it is. It, it just is. So if someone has any explanation for why this happens or why my test is flawed, I would welcome comments that tell me what I did wrong or how I can improve this. Because my understanding is that either it shouldn't matter at all or it should be better. But I don't see why it makes it worse. And every time I have uh, run this test, the 12 blocks platform makes things worse than a 6 block platform. And I probably should test everything in between so I can find the optimum. Uh, but I'm going to leave it for now because this is not the primary test that I want to do today. I just wanted to, to show you this result because it is surprising to me and I don't have a good explanation. And my witch farm that I was about to look at, but my render distance is much shorter because I don't want to load things unnecessarily. To speed things up because look at that performance that performance is nice but yeah i'm gonna keep the 12 extra blocks that i have of glass even though i should probably make it shorter but uh, that's not the goal today what i actually want to test here is what prevents the spawns from continuing because uh, there is a bit of logic in how spawning works is that certain blocks that are placed on this level here will immediately abort the, any spawning attempts and uh, no attempts will be done to move into the farm. And glass probably shouldn't cause it. But before we do that, we need to get a new baseline. And for this, we're gonna have a platform three blocks higher up. So at Y level 71. So I'm adding a, just some glass above here because this raises the height map, right? So it will affect the spawn rates. It's not that it will matter so much with such short tests anyway, because the, the randomness and noise is worse than what this little difference in height map causes. But let's keep everything fair. And the reason why I want glass here is that I want to be able to place stone and other blocks that are spawnable under here, right? So... Uh, I definitely want to have this spawn proof somehow and uh, without lighting it up because we are in complete darkness. More on that in a second. Uh, so let's get a new baseline just with uh, sticking out 12 blocks and how many spawns do we get like this. And we're gonna do something funny in a second but let's just get a baseline like this just to see that nothing has been affected. And let's see. 97. But now I'm going to show you something neat. So uh, before I show you something neat, uh, let's just go in here and check light levels. Minihud is telling us that everything is zero. Uh, if we look here, well, it says that there is 15 skylights, but uh, well, things are spawning, right? So it should be zero. Or does it? Does that mean that? Or has something changed? I believe something has changed and I have gotten actually comments on discord that this might actually be a new 118 thing what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take the fill command that i used to place that glass and i'm gonna change it to tinted glass bam let's oh did you see what just happened there suddenly which has spawned another witch spawned uh, it's much faster now trust me this is kind of uh, interesting so spawn tracking stop spawn tracking start and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. This is already, already much faster. All right. And what did we get after one hour? Spawn tracking, 328 per hour. Yeah, yeah that happened. So uh, my best understanding of what's going on is we can use the, the pink carpet and uh, the carpet feature in the carpet mod, which it is called after. And this tells us what can spawn where. Let me just get here into the middle and remove this block. If I place this carpet here, it tells us that a witch can spawn here, right? But it has only 27% chance of succeeding. Now let's put the tinted glass back in. Place the carpet again, 100%. And the only difference here is now the skylight is zero. 
I think to the edges here, we're still letting in some skylight in, so this shouldn't be 100%. And it isn't, it's 94, 94, 92, etc. Uh, so it appears that skylight, maybe moonlight, during the night still affects spawn rates, but it doesn't prevent spawns, and it might be something new in 118. I haven't seen this before, uh, although I have always made my farms completely in the dark, so it probably doesn't matter, but um, it's interesting nonetheless. But anyway, so like I said, we have this here, and uh, more spawns are better, so let's just remember what our numbers were. Our numbers were 328 per hour, and 328 per hour is our baseline for all our tests. So the first thing I want to do is just to test the idea that uh, transparent blocks like glass will not affect the spawn rates. So let's just fill everything in here. And I'm using the carpet mod creative no clip feature so that we can fly through the glass. I'm just going to clear out the platform and uh, the rates should be more or less the same. So we should see around 300, 350 which is in an hour. And that's indeed what we get, 350 per hour, even with the glass at foot level. So now let's just take the white stained glass and replace it with stone, like that. And now I suspect this should behave like it didn't have the extension platform, so the rates should be cut roughly in half. So my prediction is around 160-ish spawns per hour. And the rates we got, well, 180, well, close enough to my guess. Now the question is, is tinted glass, since it doesn't let light through, is tinted glass considered to be the same as normal glass when it comes to preventing pack spawns? Or is it considered to be stone when it comes to preventing pack spawns? Only one way to find out. Actually, there are multiple ways of finding out, but this is the most fun one. Tinted glass and replace the stone restart the tests and let's see the results. If tinted glass is like stone, we should see results below 200. And if it's like glass, then we should see results above 300. And the moment of truth, bam. Tinted glass is just like glass when it comes to preventing pack spawns. It does not prevent pack spawns. This should be very, very clear results. And the next thing we want to test is observers. Bam, we filled the entire thing with observers. We're gonna see how the observers are affecting the spawn rates, if they are like stone or if they are like glass. And there is nothing in between here. Either the block completely prevents pack spawns or it doesn't. We should get a definitive answer. And once again, just like with the tinted glass, if the number is above 300, then they don't prevent pack spawns. And if it's below 200, then they definitely do. All right, the moment of another two. Observers don't prevent pack spawns. That means that the whole idea of me designing the witch farm is false. And I will now explain why. Let's set the time to noon so we can see a little bit better. So it's not dark and gloomy, even though my attempts completely failed. And I was thinking that in Ilbango's witch farm design here, you can see that there are observers at foot level. And I was thinking that, oh, they will prevent pack spawns. I didn't actually test. This is no joke. This is the first time I tested it. That's how I design things. I design things first, and then I try to justify for myself that the idea was sound. It isn't. Observers don't prevent pack spawns. These observers here don't matter at all. I don't know why I'm getting slightly higher rates. It's probably only because I have slightly more extension here. Because the idea behind this farm is very simple. Uh, rather than lowering observers here on my sticky pistons, I'm lowering... Well, originally I was lowering the iron trap doors here. That would be just flapping in front of the observers. But, but that required this dust here and, and these blocks that are powered by the dust to be too close to this these pistons and I had QC issues. It wasn't catastrophic, it was still working, but uh, Boyan helped me figure out this mechanism here instead where we are flapping these trap doors next to these glass panes which are in front of the observers. And the glass panes don't prevent pack spawns that I know it. It's both that it's glass and also because it's not a full-sized block. Because the blocks that prevent pack spawns in, in the current version of Minecraft I think are defined as 
the material they are made of must be conducting redstone and they must be full-sized block. Then the block will prevent pack spawns, otherwise they won't. And uh, this isn't a full-sized block, so it should be fine. But anyway, this doesn't matter because as we just saw, observers don't prevent pack spawns. So the whole idea of this farm is unnecessary, but I like designing it and it, the, the design ended up pretty much exactly like in Mango's farm. But I guess, yeah, I was inspired by it and, and I made more or less the same decisions. The one thing I might actually want to change on this design here, I want to move these tripwire hooks to here and just prevent some, some light here. But I, I don't even know if I need to bother because I already have better performance. But you know what? It might be actually worth it just to see if this improves the performance even better. So let's do that. Oh. I thought I remembered that I actually did try this, and there is a very good reason why I had the repeaters there. I just forgot that I did it a, a week ago. I already tested this. So, uh, oh, I have the stupid command blocks destroying my items, but I can just stand in the tripwire and you can see what happens. See that piston? Yeah, quasi-connectivity is killing us again. So yeah, that idea is completely unnecessary. I was thinking that the shorter delay for lowering these pistons here would somehow improve things, but it's not worth fighting with quasi-connectivity on the pistons over there, so we're not gonna do that. Let's move back to the old design just like it was just a while ago. Bam. And there, repaired. So, what is the conclusion of today's experiments? Well, the conclusion of today's experiments is that these two farms are pretty much the same. The improvement that I thought I did, which was this mechanism here, is not an improvement because observers being here does not matter at all. It, observers do not prevent pack spawns. Prove me wrong. Uh, do the same experiment or maybe do a better experiment. This was a very improvised experiment, but I think it should be good enough to show that, well, yeah, observers don't actually matter there. And uh, we can have as many observers as, as we want in our machines. And I just need to fix this a little bit more because this world will be available as a world download in the description of this video, of course, in case you want to do some other experiments or maybe see this witch farm design compared to Il Mangos. The main behavior is exactly the same. So witches spawn here, they step into the tripwire or they get detected by the tripwire. The tripwire hooks lower the pistons here, which sends a clock signals into the shifting floor. The floor shifts, the witches fall. When they fall, they step out of the tripwire and these things retract and we stop shifting the floor. And we don't want to shift the floor because when the floor is being pushed by pistons, it is not spawnable so, and we want it spawnable as long as possible. So we want to shift the floor as fast as possible and get rid of the witches. That's basic idea. There isn't much to it. It's pretty much exactly like Il Mango's design. They are equivalent, except that this one uses a lot of tinted glass because I kind of just wanted to build the farm around tinted glass just to see what the problems are. And the problems are not big, but uh, a piston that is extending is letting light through. So that is good to know. It's not letting light through in this configuration here, right? So if you just have blocks above it, but if I had this block open here, that lets light through. And that's pretty much the only thing I learned about tinted glass. There isn't much to it. It behaves just like solid blocks, except you can see through them. So about those scientific papers where the title ends in a question mark, yeah, the, the, the answer is no. I the, Whatever improvement I did is just accidental. Maybe slightly different clocks, slightly different timing, or maybe the pack spawning platform is slightly bigger than on that farm, but the difference is marginal. So you can take the world download, maybe see if you can improve this. There are many improvements you can do here. I already saw that some people have done dustless versions of this uh, after seeing my Let's Play episode. Uh, so that could be an option and uh, yeah let me know if you build this if you like it thanks a lot for watching and uh, have a good tinted glass bye